Now, sticking with Seagull, he seems to have a bad reputation with hurting stuntmen. Is that true? Does he actually go harder than he should, like punching them or doing other techniques that he should lighten up on? <laughs> um, yeah, you hit the nail right on the head. Uh. Hey guys, in this video with my interview continuing stuntman extraordinary Stephen Lambert, buy his book by the way these stories and so much more in it highly recommend it i'm going to link it in the description below so you can buy it from amazon but we're going to cover the topic of does steven skull really hurt stuntmen during the making of his films and also i asked steven lambert what he thought as far as steven skull if he can legitimately take care of himself so i hope you enjoy this clip and i'll be posting other segments of the interview when we talk about john claude van damme when we talk about Dragon the Bruce Lee story. And when we talk about Stephen Lambert himself, which is very interesting on how he got into martial arts, how he got into stunt work, etc. So that full interview will be posted later. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video in the meantime to help support it. He has a bad habit. Not only does that with stunt people, but he does it with his old crew. Meaning like Jet Li has his own crew. You know, Jackie Chan has his own crew, stunt guys, you know, Seagal at that time had his own crew, own martial artists that didn't know anything about stunts. You know, they were just martial artists, let alone being brutal to his crew. He was brutal to stunt guys. You know, I tell a story in the book where I had a part in one of his movies and I had this whole elaborate fight routine and he had to throw me, arm throw me, uh, you know, do a reverse and arm throw me. And if he went, anywhere out of that realm of doing something different in that arm reverse, because I'm in the air, he would have broke my arm in half. And he tried, but God damn it. God bless it. I'm sorry. I said the <laughs> Oh, you're, you're good. In one, in, in one, in one stretch. But if I wasn't such a monkey, he would have torn my arm in half. I got out of it. It was a miracle. And yeah. he was shot. And he was shocked. And I stopped in the middle of the fight. And I grabbed my arm away from him and I just cut. And, and I was out of breath because, not because I was tired, because I was so nervous and so shocked that I got out of it. And he was shocked himself. And he, apo he apologized, you know, and I said, don't make the same mistake again because you can, re and luckily he didn't make the same mistake, but he's notorious of breaking people's arms, legs, ribs, wow. uh, cutting people, you know, not so much Van Damme, you know, um, you know, and, I, and I've been around Van Damme and around people, you know, most of the time with Van Damme, it was an accident, but Seagal's notorious for that. Now, now, with that, though, because in the book you mentioned was for Out for Justice, you, I guess you had like a disarm where you were going to get the shotgun away from him, but he didn't like that. So yeah. then, you know, it went into him yeah. basically trying to rip your arm out of its socket, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. So with well, Seagal in this... He didn't, like the idea, he didn't like the idea of the bad guy disarming him. Sure. Well, yeah, he's always been invincible for the most part in movies, so... Yeah, and what happens is he, yeah, you know... It, I get, I disarm him, but then he disarms me back. He gets the gun away from me back, but he didn't yeah. like that moment. So <laughs> that moment to, the director and the stunt coordinator was trying to convince him it's going to make you look even stronger, but he didn't, he didn't accept it. So here's an interesting question. Since he has that reputation, are stuntmen, it, they seem like there's, do they, do they not want to work with them? They still seem eager. Cause you even talk about like in on deadly ground, there's all these stuntmen that are lined up, you know, for parts in that movie. So even though knowingly they can get injured, which that would affect their livelihood. I mean, if they broke their arm or their rib, obviously not going to be able to work. Like why would Stuttman even want to work with them at that point? Once reputation's out, you know, uh, experience bad or good. Um, hoping that wouldn't happen. <laughs> hoping it wouldn't happen. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's all I can tell you, you know, mm. but, but nine times out of 10, there's always that idea all the time that, that you got to keep a third eye on what he's doing. Wow. And, and 
you know, if you're not aware enough and if you're not good enough, he's going to hurt you. You know, there's a classic story. I think I kept this in the book. There's a lot of, uh, you know, I, I, I cut out like 286 pages, but there's a great story. Sven Thorsen, okay. um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's great friend and an action actor mm -hmm. in his own right and a great friend of mine. Um, he did a movie with Seagal, uh, a pool room fight. And there was these breakaway pool sticks um, uh, with alongside real pool sticks. And, and Seagal knew where the breakaways were and knew where the real ones were. And come time to shoot this piece, fighting with, with um, um, uh, Sven Thorsen uh, on action during the fight, instead of grabbing the breakaways, the fake ones, he grabbed the real ones and he broke them over uh, Sven's head. Hey guys, just a side note. That pool room fight never took place in the final cut on, on Deadly Ground. Here's some trivia for you. When Danish stuntman and actor Sven Thorsen met Steven Seagal on the set, he was asked by Seagal to kick him to show what Sven was capable of. Sven hesitantly kicked Seagal, who caught his leg and threw him to the ground. Seagal then asked Sven to kick him again, giving it his best shot. I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Sven kicked him as fast and as hard as he could, and Seagal fell to the ground. When shooting a scene together a day or two later, Steven Seagal hit Sven Thorsen in the throat, resulting in Sven being knocked out for three or four seconds. It looked so realistic that Seagal decided that Sven's character, Otto, died, and Sven's remaining scenes were cut from the film. All right, now back to the interview about that pool hall fight scene. And when Sven got up, he looked at Seagal, and Seagal looked at Sven, and Sven said in his very unique Viking way, Steven, is that the best you can do? You hit like a little girl. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I do remember reading that in the book. So do you think Seagull just has like a sadistic mean streak or what? <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it's it's maybe it's that it's holier than thou. Mm. It's, you know, I've had 45 years plus of experience and I've seen it all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely get a sense of that in this book. Jealousies, insecurities, um, getting away with situations, knowing that, you know, mm. it just depends on the person. You know, okay. I tell a great story. I think it's in the book with Sven again. They're, they're going to do a movie that they did in Alaska. Seagal and had his uh, girlfriend with him. And Sven's sitting on the airplane with him. And this is after that it happened. And, um, and uh, they're eating on the airplane. And, um, and uh, uh, Sven takes his fork. And uh, if you remember a fork on an airplane, it's pretty thick. They're pretty stout. He takes the fork and he turns it into a rose. <laughs> a rose, the fork, he turns, you know, all, all the, the toothpick looking yeah. Things that are on the fork into and and she showed me this routine before and it looks like a rose and he leans over and and first it's Seagal then it's his girlfriend by the window and he leans over and he gives the fork flower to Seagal's <laughs> girlfriend that's Sven for you sure. right here sweetheart because you're so beautiful Right. <laughs> and Seagal is taking this all in and and uh, and um, Thorson goes to me. Uh, 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 Seagal looked at him and I said, well, what did he say? Did he say anything? He goes, no, it's what uh, what Seagal did about a half hour after. And I go, well, what did he try to do? And he goes, well, he tried to not let me see but he took another fork and he tried to bend it and he couldn't do it. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. That's funny. Quick side note, guys. Sven Thorsen was a strongman competitor. In fact, won Denmark's strongest man in 1983. So I'm not surprised he could transform an airplane fork into a rose. Yeah, Sven, he sounds like a funny guy. <laughs> um, and the stuff you mentioned in the book that he can get away with because of his delivery with what he says, he's probably like the only guy that could do that. Yeah. But um, one more Steven Seagal question. Because I get a lot of comments, a lot of negative comments on my channel, which I always find amusing, towards Steven Seagal. It's like the common belief is 
that Aikido is worthless and Seagull is only limited to Aikido, which he actually started with karate. But in your opinion, you know, as like a lifelong martial artist, having worked with so many people working with Steven, do you think Steven Seagull, uh, Seagull has legitimate fighting skills if he actually had to get in a real life confrontation? What's your opinion on that? You know, again, with all due respect, you know, he's a movie guy. The same thing with all, all the rest of them, you know. Um, uh, Joe Lewis, Benny Ukitas, they're different. Mm, yeah, real fighters. They're, they're real fighters. The guys like Seagal, guys like Van Damme, guys like uh, Jackie Chan, um, Jet Li, you know, they're not fighters, you know. They don't have the experience. It's a whole different way of life, you know. They're great movie fighters, you know. Uh, if you ask me, uh, you know, the other way around, are they great movie si fighters better than guys like, you know, the guys I mentioned the other way around? Yeah, they're better movie fighters than Benny Ukitas. You know, they're better movie fighters because that's what they do. But yeah, real fighting, sense. it's the opposite. It's the truth. It's a fact. All right. Thanks for watching that segment of the interview, guys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and buy Stephen Lambert's book. It's linked in the description below from Amazon. Highly entertaining. You won't regret it. If you like this channel, you're going to love that book.